Welcome to a brief walkthrough of IPFS Desktop. First step is to go to docs.ipfs.tech, as I've done here. Then, click IPFS Desktop. Now you just simply scroll down, and then follow the instructions for whatever operating system you're on. After you get that installed, it'll launch up, and it'll look something like this. From here, we can click the status page, and we can see that I have 1.2 gigs of data stored, and I have discovered over 600 peers. See my peer ID, um, the Kubo version running in the background, the UI revision, and some information for how to disable bandwidth metrics if we wanted to. So next up, let's take a look at the Files tab. So you can see I have two files, one that is 10 bytes and a directory that is 125 uh, megabytes. We can also hit import and import a file, a folder from IPFS or a new folder. So if we go to import from IPFS, we'll be asked to give a path or a CID as well as a name for it. But for this example, we're just gonna add a file. And then if you click it, you can view it. So you could think of the files tab almost like a set of bookmarks with human readable names. Um, you can see that it actually uh, pinned this file upon adding it. So now what we could do is we could set the pinning status and we could actually unpin it. On that same menu, if you had a pinning provider set up, you'd be able to see that as well. Additionally, in this menu, we have share links where you can get a gateway URL to whatever image that you shared. So for example, if we wanted to share that image that we just got, we go back to our web browser. We could paste that link right in and we can see the image. You can also copy the CID, um, you can inspect it, uh, download it, download it as a car, rename it, remove, and publish to IPNS. We're going to circle back to publish to IPNS. Next up is the explore tab. From here, you can explore the DAG of a few select things like the XKCD archives. Um, this is mostly useful if you're interested in how things work under the hood. So we're just going to move on to the Peers tab. And right here you can see that I have 609 peers. Um, from here you can also add connections. Um, so this would be um, like a uh, multi-address to another node that you'd like to connect to. Um, this allows you to skip using the command line interface. So next up is the Settings tab. On the Settings tab, we can access and change all sorts of things. So the gateway that was provided earlier when we wanted to copy a public address, um, that gateway is set right here. So if you don't like the default, you can totally change it. Here is where we can see our IPNS publishing keys. So now these can be very useful if you want to share a CID, or um, I guess specifically an address, and you want that address to always point to the newest version of something. So let's say you're publishing a website, for example. So as you can see, I have um, a blog titled Blag, and I have uh, my self key. So what would happen if we generated a key here? And let's name it Tutorial. Now we have a new key. And if we go back to our Files tab, let's say we wanted to create a directory. And just for convenience sake, we'll also name this Tutorial. And in our Tutorial directory, Let's put in this picture. Okay, so now we will publish this picture to IPNS. We're gonna use our tutorial key and publish it. And it's going to have us wait the initial 20 copies of the updated IPNS network. Um, so I'm gonna fast forward through this part. And now we can copy the link. We go back to our handy web browser we can see our image at this new address. So let's say we want to update the image. We, um, we just want to use a different way to maybe represent our fancy IPFS picture. So let's import a different file. It could be in the same directory or folder, it doesn't really matter. We can publish this to our tutorial key again. And we have to wait for another 20 copies of the updated IPNS record to be stored. And now we actually don't need to copy this address here. We can just go back to our web browser 
what we should be able to do is just refresh and now we have our new picture and this could work with websites or really whatever you want to use your key for now finally I mentioned pinning services so this is the interface where you can add a pinning service we support um, out of the box estuary web 3 storage pinata and file base and you can also add a custom one um, I'll just show off that menu so you would just name it um, get the API endpoint from who, uh, whoever is hosting your pinning service and a secret access token from the same location you can change your language here submit or not submit analytics here you can enable a command line interface tutor mode here. Uh, this will show a little view code icon next to common IPFS commands, um, and that could help you if you're trying to learn the command line. And then finally, we have our IPFS configuration where you can edit it and save it as you please, conveniently in the web UI. I hope this breakdown was informative and helpful to whoever needs it. Um, my name is Discordian, and I hope you have a lovely day.